Hi there, so today's row, we're going to be rowing off some beer. Now, don't worry, I'm not drinking and rowing. Uh, all I'm doing is going to row right about the same amount of calories that's contained in four bottles of Corona, which is about 600 calories. Now, I've looked through previous rows I've done before, and it seems that the eight times four minutes with three minutes rest row will hit me right about 600 calories through the duration of this row. So, intensity-wise, we're going to be up at right about 28 strokes a minute, nice high stroke rate, and... We're going to be right about 2k plus 5 to 7 pace, which is about 7 or 8 out of 10. So it really is up there in terms of getting that push in from the legs. This is a performance endurance row, okay? This is on my uh, performance intensity kind of uh, pyramid thing I've got. This is right in the middle. So this is about holding intensity for a period of time. Then you get a relatively good rest, but then you go at it again and again and again. And by the eighth interval, you should be pretty much tired, okay? Now, we've got to get into a warm-up first to make sure we're ready for today's row, and we need to set up our machine first before we can even do that. So, on the concept two, let's go to the drag factor and set that where you want it to be. I've got a video up here on this YouTube channel talking about drag factor. You might want to set it between 120 and 130 if you uh, don't know much about where you want to set it, and then you can experiment from there. But please don't just set it all the way to 10. If you're on a non-concept two, then just set the resistance on your machi machine so you get a good feel from the stroke but you don't have to heave against it with your upper body okay remember power comes from the legs next up go to your monitor and set it to eye heights so you don't have to look up and you don't have to look down and finally if you can adjust the foot stretchers set them to a position where you're able to come to the front of the machine comfortably with your shins pointing vertically okay if you're set too high you might not be able to get there set too low you might go scooting straight past there which can cause power leaks and some kind of hyperextension injuries as well a good ballpark is to set the straps across the balls of your feet okay and then you can adjust from there right so a four minute warm-up we're going to start this around about 18 strokes a minute and uh, just uh, enough of a push from your legs that you can feel the connection to your hands so really just as though you were standing up for the time being and then we'll start to increase the intensity after about a minute okay here we go in three two one and we're off so like i say just connect your legs to the foot plates so that you can feel the power going in but importantly, you can work on the timing of your hands connecting the handle to whatever your machine uses, whether it's a flywheel or a water wheel or a magnet, whether you've got some kind of fancy water pod that you're rowing in, who knows? It's all the same. As you push with your feet, you want your hands to connect the handle to the machine instantly. You don't want to push with your feet first and your backside scoots away from you. And you don't want to pull on the handle first, at which point you can't get the power in from your legs. So talking of power, we're a minute in. Just give a bit more of a push from your legs for the next minute. If you know your 2k training pace, take it up to around about 2k plus 20. If you don't have a 2k training pace, they do help when it comes to intensity. So you might want to try rowing a two kilometer time trial, if you're healthy enough to do so, and divide the resulting time by four. That gives you your average time to cover 500 meters in that 2K time trial. And then you set your monitor to show your 500 meter current pace. And that is the pace that you then adjust from. <laughs> right, one more stroke here. Put one foot in the ground, roll with the other leg. What I mean is that your 2K training pace is your average 2k 500 meters so when i say 2k plus 20 you take that average 500 meters for your 2k time trial time and you add 20 seconds to it <laughs> i think i garbled my way through that one more stroke here change feet there's a description a proper description of what a 2k training time is 
in the description to this video or podcast. You might want to read that afterwards if you don't have a 2K training pace. Rather than <laughs> trying to rely on that garbled 30 seconds I just blurted out at you. One more stroke. And then let's put both feet into the straps. Legs straight. Roll with your back and arms. So here you're just pivoting backwards and forwards over your hips. You're not bending, rounding, curling, falling, crunching your lower back. You're just hinging, pivoting backwards and forwards and then you're pulling in your arms and releasing them. One more here, into the front with straight arms, forward tilt, push out with your legs. Now if you can, just try and hold that forward tilt and straight arms the whole time. So don't push out too hard with your legs. All you need to do is get used to this sensation of pushing out with that forward lean and straight arms. One more. And that is the warm up done. Right, oh, still not particularly warm. It's only three days ago that I was filming outside in the sun. And now, where are we? So I'm just trying to find the session. Row off beer. There we go. It's in our zone is row off beer if you want to load it up yourself. Um, yeah, only three days later, it's snowing outside, which is why I've got my hoodie on. Um, yeah, apparently all the warm air that was coming up from the south no longer coming up from the south it's cold air coming down from the north right let's get into this so these are all hopefully you can find a pace here that you can maintain across all the intervals what i don't want you to do is start off really fast for each of the interv intervals and then have to slow down because you've gone too fast okay so think seven or eight out of ten intensity to be honest in order to get up to a stroke rate like 28 you're gonna hit a natural pace anyway to because to, you have to push harder with the legs to get there so maybe just if you don't know about 2k training pace and that kind of stuff just see what pace you roll at by the time you get to 28 strokes a minute and then see if you can hold that for the four minutes okay ah there we go you probably have said that during the main description at the front, but that gave you that gave you a little bit longer just to recover from the warm up to then get ready for today's session, which we are about to start. So, hit a pace that you know you're happy with at 28 strokes a minute that hits that intensity of seven or eight out of ten. Uh, like I say, run about 28 strokes a minute for four minutes, and then we're going to get a three minute rest. All right, here we go then. In three, two, one, go. Ugh. So. 28 strokes a minute is when this is like the first of the rates where I start to call it higher rate below 28 kind of mid down well 24 26 28 I'd say is mid rate under 22 is low rate and then above 28 is high rate. But like I say, in order to get your stroke rate up, there's two halves to your rowing stroke. You have to push harder with the legs to get a faster drive phase but you also need a quicker recovery and the two of them work in harmony for stroke rate but you should find that just pushing harder with the legs and keeping a good rhythm 
will automatically get your pace nice and fast I'm kind of bouncing between 2k plus 5 and 7 as I try and get a feel for how, bo how happy my body is working at this intensity now it wasn't the most intense of warm-ups today so it could well be that today's or this first interval of today's workout will be your proper warm-up and that once you get to the end of this one and then get your three minutes rest by the time you're ready for interval two you'll be properly warmed up ATP recharged and the rest of the intervals will feel a lot smoother okay less than 30 seconds to go in fact 20 to go keep pushing with those legs 10 seconds Two more strokes. Last one. Oh, definitely. I felt a bit, still a bit cool when starting that one. Oh, either my heart rate monitor battery is dying, or I finished that at seventy. BPM heart rate. I think that's a bit unlikely. <sighs> right. So I've not switched this to calories yet. So that first row, first interval was 77 calories. In fact, I'm gonna change my metrics on erg zone so I can see cals and I can keep my PM set to pace. Oh, come on. There we go. Right. So 77 calories. If we multiply that by 5, that's what, 56 plus 56? That's 660 calories projected if we do this eight times, which I think is probably spot on, to be honest. I think there is going to be this uh, extra kind of afterburn effect that even though we're resting here for three minutes as it takes time for the heart rate to come down uh, and all that kind of stuff that happens in your body we are going to be burning more calories within these three minute rests than if we were just sitting on the television sitting on the couch watching tv so it may be that the total calorie burn is just a little bit higher um, but then that offsets with the fact that the concept two does overestimate calorie burn a little bit. On a roll like this, it's interesting it gets closer on an interval workout than it does on um, uh, the, the long steady state row. So we'll take a look and see uh, what the, the difference is between the concept two and my Apple Watch for the total calories burnt. For instance, from an active calorie point of view, my watch is saying just 40 calories versus the 77 but we'll see what the end result is after eight of these i'm gonna go by the concept two today <laughs> i'm not gonna try and get 600 calories on the apple watch so otherwise we'll be here all day so 20 seconds to go make sure you've had a drink get yourself strapped in when you can 
Ready for the next one? We're going to do exactly the same again, okay? In 10 seconds time. Now you can start light rowing to get the flywheel spinning if you wish, but we're going in four, three, two, one, go. It's the same stroke rate, hopefully the same pace. I definitely do feel a lot more fluid here than I did last time round, so I may have put up a little text box saying continue to warm up or whatever at the end of the warm up just to make sure that you were nice and warm as we started this workout so keep that stroke rate up try to keep your pace as constant and consistent as you can not only through the interval itself but really try across the course of this workout certainly for the first five or six intervals to keep around about the same pace for each interval depending on your fitness there is always a chance that even with these luxurious three minute rests towards interval six, seven and eight fatigue may set in at which point you'll really have to dig in to hold the same pace remember whether it's as we get through the workout or even just as we get into the last minute of each interval as some element of tiredness inevitably kicks in and it becomes up to you to keep it at bay the important thing is to keep technique fluid and just think about letting your form be what keeps you on track you don't start collapsing posture or grabbing early on the handle in the hopes to either make up time or give yourself a rest alrighty 10 seconds almost there two strokes last one ah, 76 calories so 153 so that's 153 calories burned according to concept 2 over two intervals my watch is nowhere near as hopeful as that my watch is just saying 100 calories so this idea of concept 2 being a little bit over eager 
with the amount of calories that you burn. For me, anyway, it's very evident. It's understandable, though, because the monitor's kind of... Although it knows the intensity that you're working at, because it can tell the amount of watts that's going into the machine, it's all taken as a an average, so it's an average weight. Uh, it's not really taking heart rate into account here. So it's just about uh, duration and the amount of watts you're putting in with this. I think it's either 75 or 78 kilogram uh, estimated weight is how the Concept2 works it out. So it's hugely different. Now again, my watch does still at least accumulate calories through this three minute rest. So it's already given me an extra seven calories just for sitting here talking to you for the past minute and a half. Because remember, you do burn in, a, in an hour round about 100 calories, give or take, maybe 10, 20, depending on what your body type is like. But per hour, you just burn that amount of calories. And so often that's where calorie counting equipment gets it wrong, is that it adds those calories on and it's like you think you're burning them, but you're not really because you're just burning them because you're alive. And so it incorporates your exercise calories into that. So, you're, so you're, what you want is to always look at active calories, not total calories. So for instance, my watch says 92 active calories, but 113 total calories. So that's like 25, 20, whatever, difference between the two. All right, make sure you have a little wiggle of your backside. I've been sitting here for a while now. That point where the sit bones are squishing your glutes might start to get a little bit tender if you're just sitting and not moving. I hope you've had a drink as well. 15 seconds to go until interval three. Oh, 10 seconds. We're in it again in five, four, three, two, one, go. Now, towards the end of the last interval, I was talking about the importance of having a good, consistent technique all the way through the interval. But I always flag up the three reasons you want to have a good consistent technique. The first of which is injury prevention. If you are making sure to put the power in to the machine in a safe ergonomic manner you're not yanking against the power or taking it through your lower back then you're less likely to get back or arm injuries from rowing which you really shouldn't be it's a motion that you control yourself. It's not like cycling on a bike that's too big or small. You sit on the rowing machine and apart from the height of the foot plates it's pretty much all down to how you hold your positions from the front of the stroke to the back and then back in to the front again so it's up to you to really think about if you are suffering any niggles when rowing are you in 
the right positions to protect yourself and really that means straight arms at the front of the machine and a forward tilt over your hips with a good posture so hips tilted forwards towards the front of the machine as you start the stroke and then you hold those straight arms and the forward tilt as you push your feet into the machine and that lets the power surge into the machine without it going through your lower back oh almost there two strokes one more oh I got lost in my description uh, another 77 so that's 154 210 plus 21 230 according to concept 2 140 according to my watch but yeah so you come to the front of the machine arm straight you are tilted in towards the front of the machine leaning into the front by pivoting over the hips you're not slumping forwards as you come in here it's a pivot over your hips and then you hold that position as you push with your legs until your legs are just past that halfway point then you swing over your back and then you pull in your arms so you go push swing pull that's back swing and the pull kind of happen they overlap each other in the same way that your legs are still pushing while you're doing that as well have a drink but it's really important because if you swing too soon and then push with your legs even doing that I can feel just leaning backwards all the power goes into my lower back all the force so if you then add pushing with your feet at the same time when you're leaning backwards all that force goes through here and will irritate it, aggravate it and could possibly cause pain in the same way that if you pull from the front if you yank against the handle instead of letting the power flow through straight arms that's when you tend to start to get things like tennis elbow and really sore forearms and uh, possible like bicep and shoulder issues from yanking at the front oh, right 40 seconds to go hopefully you're able to recover quite well in these three minutes what you might find if you've got heart rate monitor on is that as you go through this workout your heart rate will recover kind of less and less as we go through it and that's where the kind of intensity thing comes in here where your body obviously hasn't recovered enough before you start the next interval speaking of which the next interval is starting in 15 seconds so make sure you're comfortable you're strapped in if you want to do some light rowing to get that flywheel moving first rather than starting a dead flywheel please do otherwise we're going in five seconds time three two one go <clears throat> back up to the same rate and pace And try not to over start what I mean is if you suddenly find you start up at like 32 strokes a minute and a couple of seconds faster than you've been rowing so far try to hold off and just settle in to around about 28 
strokes a minute and around about 2k plus 5 to 7 seconds basically the same pace you've been rowing at for the past 3 intervals hopefully so injury prevention is the first reason to think technique the next one is just about getting that power into the machine you want that push of your legs to get into the machine without being interrupted or fought by your back or arms so if you keep straight arms and a forward tilt that power from your legs which is run about 60% of the power that you're able to put in you want all of it to get in there so fighting it with your back and arms doesn't make sense and then if you were to pull early with your arms not only are you reducing the power that you could be putting in from your legs you're also wasting power if you could be adding with your arms same with your back if you swing your back too soon before your legs connect you'll basically be giving up 25% of your potential rowing power okay two more one more ah. there we go we're at the Bon Jovi point we're halfway there calorie check 76 again that means what 302 is that right no yeah something like that oh, active calories on my watch it's only 200 and total calories is 240 but I'm still going to go by the concept too in terms of burning off the 600 calories of four beers mostly not mostly but partly because by the time we factor in the four minute warm up this main session a two minute cool down and like I say the afterburn effect through these rest periods where your elevated heart rate and things will still be burning calories then I have to figure going to be what around about 700 likely as far as the concept 2 reads if you run about 750 calories from all stages of today's row which and then you still have to add on the uh, the afterburn so I think by the time we put that all together we'll be close to the 600 calories for four bottles of Corona 
Why Corona? Why Corona? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> no, it's my Sharona, isn't it? <sighs> my Sharona. Or Sir Sharonan. Dun, 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 dun. Sorry, I've lost it. I've lost it. Come back to us, John. Come back. Why Corona? Because it's like the third most popular beer in the world. So, uh, or at least it was on the website I looked at. And so I figured that most people would know what a Corona is. Whereas if I said, uh, well, I don't know, Samuel Adams, although you can get it here in the UK, it's not that popular. So people in the UK might go, what is a Sam Adams? And elsewhere in the world. I was going to do Guinness, but Guinness is surprisingly light. It's like only 120 calories or something. So it's like 30, 40 calories less than a Corona. My Corona. Do, 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 do. That's going to be on my head the whole time now. Okay, get ready to go into the fifth interval. We've got 15 seconds to go. Get yourself strapped in and comfortable and happy. Or strapped in and comfortable. We are going in five, four, three, two, one, go. So now, on the way home, if you think of this, is that we're rowing a circuit, we're past the halfway point, and we're now headed for home. Four more of these to do, and then we'll be all done. But do keep the intensity up there. It's an important row within a training sphere. My intensity pyramid has three main tiers that comprise the different intensities you should work out at. My row of a cookie row was one of the bottom tier, low and slow, fitness boosting rows. The very foundation of your fitness, without which you won't be able to last the distance during the faster rows. Then there was the row off cake, the chocolate cake row, which was the top of the pyramid. Maximum intensity where you were putting everything into the two minute intervals to hold your 2k pace with only two minutes rest between and then this row is in between where the intensity is up there but the duration is longer so you're rowing faster than bottom but slower than max but at an intensity where you really do have to concentrate to maintain it but it's never or not yet a question of whether you can it's more do you want to and that's where performance endurance really is at its most valuable is merging 
physical endurance with mental fortitude. 10 seconds. Almost there. Three, two, one. Oh. Another 77. Keeping this nice and even. Ah. So five, seven, 385 ish versus 257 on the watch. I know, I keep going over the same ground, but I do want to get it across that if you are on some kind of a calorie controlled diet and you're using exercise to try and get into deficit or worse, you have just had four beers and out of guilt, you're rowing to burn off the calorie intake, then I'm gonna figure by the end of this, I'm gonna be running about 200 calories different between that and that to the monitor and my watch. So and that's a huge amount. Say you're doing this all the time, say you do it seven days a week, which is unlikely, but that's like nudging on for 1500 calories, which is half a pound. And if you're getting it wrong the other way, so that you're actually eating and putting on 1500 calories because you're not burning it off, then that's you sticking on half a pound versus not losing half a pound. So it's potential, huge difference there. So anyway, have a drink. Oh. So yeah, so through these three workouts, basically getting exposed to the three intensities that I use in any of my training plans in the 2K, the 5K, the 10K, uh, the 1K. 500 meters didn't, 500 meters just had the bottom tier fitness and the top tier max. Didn't do the performance endurance because it was only, only really looking at like between a minute and a half and two minutes for your final row. So it's really just at that stage about how long can you hold your maximum pace. So. That didn't have it, but all my other ones, plans do have, they're all tagged with like coloured chilies. Green for bottom, orange for mid, and red for top for max. So if you see, and I've also got playlists for each of them. If you haven't checked out the playlists actually I have on this YouTube channel, please do, because I do group all of the rows into their own playlist. If it's like part, like this is the row, row off food one, I think that they end up in, so do take a look. 15 seconds to go until interval six. Oh, get yourself comfortable. Oh. Here we go then, in five, four, three, two, one, go. Oh. Now, you're probably thinking, hang on, didn't you talk about three, reasons for good technique and I've only mentioned two well I wanted to wait until interval six before bringing up the last one because it's right about now where it plays a huge part and it's about efficiency of getting your power into the machine. It's all very good if you can row fast, but if you can't last because you're just wasting energy, then you're not really gonna get the training results you're hoping for. Whether that's fitness, weight loss, performance. The longer you can row for, whether it's the bottom, mid or top intensities, 
the more value you give yourself and a large part of that comes from efficiency in how many muscles you use and how you use them rowing should use around about 85% of your muscles and that number greatly helps with the efficiency especially at pace because you're using your legs then your back and then your arms to get you through the stroke whereas a poor technique you may just be all arms no back and hardly any legs so that by the time it comes to three minutes into this kind of interval you're exhausted because only your arms are being used to put in the power and your legs and back are hardly working at all all right almost there 10 seconds three two one yeah oh 76 that time slackened off slackened off ah it's definitely my watch seems to think 189 beats per minute it's not I think this is one of those times where the Apple Watch is just a little bit over eager with its readings I mean I usually find that the watch is very there we go, so it suddenly just dropped to 127 so the monitor had me at 158 so I'll go for that but I was just checking because I was getting a bit alarmed I'm like really 190 that's the fastest I've been in years drink Uh, it's actually a rare moment for me that it read wrong it's usually like I say very faithful to my power labs chest strap but sometimes if it's not either if it's not loose enough sorry tight enough not so tight that you restrict the circulation or I don't think I've got hairy wrists today no give me sweat I suppose kind of matting up this so uh, the hairs I do have in my arms could also be maybe I'm having a little bit of a jerky stroke at the catch so what happens is as I drive the watch just knocks enough just kind of misses a a little moment on my wrist and so it sees that as a heartbeat so 160 plus 28 is 100 and yeah 189 so that would actually be bang on so my chest strap was saying 160 the watch was saying 189 I was rowing at 28 strokes a minute so therefore I think it's maybe a safe bet that that's what was going on right at the very end is that the watch was just kind of reading it wrong and adding my stroke rate to my heart rate so that's kind of what to worry about but usually if it's snug enough that doesn't happen so maybe it's just because I'm up there with the higher rates or something or maybe I'm doing something strange with my technique maybe tugging a little bit and the watch is just moving a tiny bit who knows Right, hopefully you've had a drink we've got 30 seconds to go until the next interval so my heart rate's gone so I was what did I say 160 when I finished the last interval I'm now down at 76 so I'm quite pleased that it's 
recovered, dropped that much. 15 seconds to go. Make sure you're comfortable, get your handle strapped in, all that kind of stuff. Interval seven, in five, four, three, two, one, go. And don't worry too much about my numbers when it comes to heart rate. You may have a lower finishing rate. You may have a higher finishing heart rate than me. You may not recover as much as I do. You may recover more. I have a very low resting heart rate anyway. When I wake up in the morning, it's like 37 most of the time. Although I have noticed that even two months on from having COVID, my resting heart rate is still around about 42 when I wake up, which for me is quite a huge increase from 37 pre-COVID to 42. I'm still shaking off the after effects of it a couple of months on. These performance endurance rows are still the ones that hit me the hardest. To be honest, I'm quite pleased that halfway through interval seven, as we are now, I'm still holding rate and pace that I was at the beginning. But hopefully that's to do with spending a lot of time building up or building back up my foundation fitness and not worrying too much about performance because that's where the after effects of COVID can really hammer you. Take time to build yourself back up, but don't work so hard that you collapse and knock yourself back down again. It's easy to go boom or bust where you have a good day and you think you're better and you do loads, but it's actually too much. And you find out the next day when you're bust, and you have a real energy crash. One more. Ah. Sorry, that wasn't meant to be a interval about the potential for long COVID, <laughs> but sometimes, I mean, I'll let you into a secret. Sometimes the things I talk about are almost like meditative, meditative, meditative. <laughs> it's almost like meditation where uh, between what I'm saying and the speech pattern, it just distracts me 
enough from the intensity that I'm rowing at because I'm just talking and not looking at the clock or thinking about the intensity. I'm just holding the pace and just talking to you. Have a drink. Two minutes to go. And what I'm hoping is that the flip side works for you in that when I start, when I'm talking through these intervals, even if you're not tuned in 100% or even 10%, <laughs> tuned into what I'm saying, I'm hoping that like the white noise of my voice, I'm just hearing things on like a, a kind of an elevated plane, it's like past your consciousness because it's just going into your ears. Uh, you may be taking in the odd words, you may be listening, but actually, it's kind of like I say, it's almost like when you're falling asleep, that kind of the alpha wave thing where you're working, you're at high intensity, and my voice is just kind of bubbling along. And hopefully, that's distracting you enough to get through these intervals. And there's always what I mean, wouldn't it be amazing if this was like almost like hypnosis? If the fact that I'm talking to you through these kind of high intensity uh, intervals, and you're not, and you're kind of, it's a subsection of your brain's attention that is taking in what I'm saying, then maybe it's like that hypnosis thing where it's like when you learn the language while you sleep. Maybe it's that, wouldn't that be amazing? I don't think that's how, how it works. <laughs> but it could be. It'd be like a learn to row in your sleep. You could just put on my videos, the whoosh of the flywheel and me rowing, you can have a nice little snooze while I'm bashing out 32 minutes of intensity in the rowing machine. Right, 20 seconds to go. Make sure you've had a drink and you've wiggled your backside and stuff. I think we're on for our 600 calories after this interval. So make sure you're ready to go in 10 seconds time. Six, five, four, three, two, one, go. So, I want you to finish strong. Now strong can mean two things. Well, it can mean three things. Strong is number one, if you're starting to fatigue, that you just keep on going as much as you can manage. Even if you're off pace, I want you to keep it up as close to what you're meant to be rowing as you can. Or, if you're on the edge of what you can manage, holding your pace, that you just keep going, holding the same pace that you have for this whole workout so far. And then, for anyone with fuel still in the tank, then pick a point, speed up, see how much faster you can go. But I don't want you to go so fast that you have to slow down. Increase your pace gradually. Keep adding every 15 to 30 seconds. And then maybe sprint the last. 15. So let's keep that technique on point. Straight arms at the front. Fingers hooked over the handle. Thumbs underneath. Handle is at a neutral height in front of you. You're looking 
straight ahead not up not down your body is tilted over your hips into a one o'clock lean and you slide until shins are vertical then push the machine away with your feet hold straight arms and forwards tilt when legs are halfway then you swing over your back followed by pulling your arms to a close send the arms straight back out over your knees tilt forwards then bend your knees come on 10 seconds here we go three two one there you go so I according to concept two finished at 611 calories which is pretty much four bottles of Corona watch for active calories 434 so that's a good bottle of beer basically difference between the two and then my total active calories which includes calories burnt just by being alive your basal metabolic rate that added was at 90 calories so I was up at 520 ish so basically about 100 calorie difference between concept 2 and the total calorie burn uh, and then you have to remember concept 2 doesn't account for calories in those 3 minute rest periods my active calories does so uh, when you think about that then maybe it's more like 400 from the actual rowing and oh, uh, so it all gets a bit murky anyway shall we get into a 2 minute cool down I think it's important to do a cool down after a row like that because it was quite intense 2 minute cool down I have one saved under the bookmark these in ErgZone if ever you're looking for a quick 2 minute you can just go to the RA track go to bookmarks or sorry go to labels find the bookmark these and you'll find a series of rows in there that are worth bookmarking and then you can go to your bookmarks and call them up I said bookmarks so many times then bookmark 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 uh, it's not beat the juice we're fine okay here we go then 2 minute cool down in 3 2 1 go so just similar to the warm up connect your legs to your hands really that's really all the intensity I want you to put in maybe around about 20 seconds slower than you were just rowing those main intervals at and that should just be enough of an activation from your legs as you push and then connect your posterior chain boink into your hands into the handle into the flywheel and that kind of tension that you then feel boomf, as you connect your feet to your hands at the same time will let your muscles fire and help them to cool down you'll know if you're going too hard if you've got a heart rate monitor on because you'll see your heart rate begin to drift up quite fast really you want to hold a nice low almost like 50% of max ish maybe 60 you can drift up by like three or four over this cool down but if you see it skyrocketing then you're not cooling down you're working out again okay coming into a close here now you don't have to stop 
just because I stop. You can continue to cool down. Or, hang on, one more stroke for me. Uh, or, if you want to find yourself a safe place off the row machine, maybe in the corner of the gym, maybe pause this video while you find that part on the stretching mats and get nice and comfortable because Stretchy John's here again. Are you smiling yet? No. Maybe someone stole his chocolate bar. Maybe someone stole his beer. <laughs> and that's why he looks so serious down his hamstrings. Ooh. But yeah, he's going to take you through a whole bunch of stretching. Uh, hamstrings, quads, hip flexors, glutes, biceps, triceps, forearms, uh, shoulders and back. I think that's it. Yeah, just remember for the biceps one, it's like you're flying, wee, like you're doing a ski jump. Okay, so you go, whoo, but then you also turn your thumbs outwards, okay? And what that does when it comes to the biceps is it elongates the long head of your bicep, and that's what gives you the good stretch. This, so basically, the stretches that you can see Grumpy John doing up in the corner, he's not grumpy, it's just, uh, I tried doing it once where it was like I was talking you through it, and I kept on getting it wrong, so I thought, let's just do it once. Completely silent face, and then I can have these long outros, hey, hey, while you're stretching. And then I will do a standalone video at one point. I'm actually ho hoping to hook up with uh, someone else to make a proper stretching video, so I just need to find the time to do that. I'm quite excited about doing that because he's a good guy. Um, yeah. Where was I? Yeah, so stretching. Uh, these are the stretches that I do uh, after a workout. So, or at least after I've spoken to you and I've cooled down, I then do these stretches and everything snaps because I'm, <laughs> I'm freezing cold. But there we go. So... There we go, we rode, depending on what data you look at. Um, but yeah, again, like by the time you factor in that two minute cool down and the four minute warm up, uh, I think we are, we will have burnt off, or at least I will have burnt off 600 calories throughout the course of uh, this row today. So I'm quite happy. I could now go and have four bottles of Corona, but I'm not going to because it's a Thursday and that would be naughty. It's a school night. Um, uh, although, yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm not particularly drinking right now anyway, so that would also be um, a bit of a daft thing to do to suddenly get four beers. I do enjoy Corona though, and I felt like I should support them because I'm sure they got hit quite hard during the coronavirus from all people who thought that maybe they came up with it. Because there are people in the world that think like that, you know. There's people in the world that will go up to an actor on a, uh, a soap, on a TV program or whatever, and they will give them abuse because of what the character in the television program has done, which I think is just bonkers that people can actually think that because they can think that that is the person that Cheryl from Newcastle or whatever is no no she's a singer isn't she <laughs> uh, yeah but that is the person that they can't quite differentiate the difference between the the actor playing a character and I just I've always found that maybe it's because I work in tv <laughs> and I and I kind of but I still think that yeah anyway anyway so um how did I get into that <laughs> I don't know how I got into that I said, my mind's gone complete blank as to how I suddenly started, started talking about um, TV programs and things. Anyway, there we go. So, uh, I do hope you enjoyed um, this. I've already said that I have uh, this one. So, basically, I've now done... So, I've done row of cookie, which, like I said, is the low and slow intensity one. I've done uh, row of some chocolate cake, which is the high top tier one, which is the sprinty one. And now we've done uh, row of some beer, which is the middle intensity one. Now, just because I've done the three of them, it doesn't mean I'm going to stop here. I'm going to add more to them, but... What I'm hoping is that this idea that you, uh, if, you're, if you've never really thought about rowing with different intensities before, uh, that you basically always just kind of sat down on a rowing machine and went uh, wobble, wobble, wobble back and forwards and that was it for 10 minutes and you were done. Hopefully, if you found this channel and you found these row alongs and you found these workouts and this is the first time you've ever kind of worked on the different intensities, I'm really hoping that you're now going to go, oh, there is different ways to do this kind of a row thing, that it doesn't have to be just the same thing over and over again. Because if nothing else, this is what keeps your body guessing. When you are, if you are trying to lose weight or watch calories or burn calories or whatever, your body will eventually adapt, okay? Metabolic adaptation is a thing, whereas if all you did was 30 minute rows at low intensity, yes, you're burning calories. That's never gonna stop, okay? You're always gonna be working out, you're always gonna be burning calories, and so, well, hey, well done you, okay? But what happens is that eventually your body gets used to it and it goes, all right, so we're doing this again. I know how to make sure and, and kind of uh, ration out the energy so I could, because basically your body is, is 
it has evolved to want to store energy, okay? So it wants to hold fat. It wants to kind of, especially when it's cold and things, it wants to hold on to these fat stores because you're not going to get a chance to go out and hunt your saber-toothed tiger and things, okay? So from a real kind of Neanderthal point of view, your body wants to store energy to help you survive, okay? So what it does is it works out how to ad adapt to what you're doing so that it can hold on to these fat stores. Um, and so when you're doing this, it goes, ah, I know a better way to do this. I'm going to hold on to as much of this as I can, and I'm just going to give you little bits of energy because I know you're only going to be rowing for 30 minutes and you're not going to end up needing all of this kind of fat burn stuff that I'm giving you. So I even here. But then when you do a really fast one, your body goes, what? What's this? We're sprinting after some saber-toothed tiger. Quick, have all the energy you can. Quick, ah. And then it, it gives you loads of calories to burn. You're like, ah, and you catch your tiger. Arr. Okay. Um, but then you get the... Um, the kind of the middle tier one so basically your body can adapt to the bottom it can adapt to the top if that's all it did and then the, the middle one is the same again this kind of performance intensity thing where your body can eventually go all right i know what's going on here but if you constantly just mix between the three of them your body just never knows where it's at okay it never knows how to really deal with that energy thing so it'll always just be throwing energy and calories at you to try and catch that saber-toothed tiger and that's how you basically keep your body fresh to carry on burning as many calories as you can. Like I say, you will be burning energy through all of these workouts, but to get the most uh, optimum amount of calorie burn, you mix things around, okay? So if you're new to rowing, hopefully these, this is a long way of saying that if you're new to rowing, this is a good way to look at how these different intensities will let you burn calories, will let you burn over around about the same amount of duration. Remember, we burnt twice as much calories in today's workout as we did in previous ones. And yes, it was like twice as long but that's because it was twice as long so we burnt twice as much so so we're doing exactly the same amount of uh energy burn in three different ways and we're keeping our body going what 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 so it's always burning as many as uh many calories as it can and it'll never adapt to how you're doing this okay <sighs> right fine i'm done that was a really long outro for the for really what amounted to nothing wasn't it but hopefully you, you got that idea so i do uh please leave me some kind of a comment let me know how you got on with this one let me know if you had some beer before or after there's a thing actually called the chunder mile where uh you drink you down a pint of beer you roll 400 meters and then you down another pint of beer, you row 400 meters, you down another pint, and you basically have four beers, you row 1,600 meters, and then the first one to get to the end and not be vomitous all over the floor, yes, uh, wins. I'm sure a rugby player came up with it. It must have been a rugby player. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so it's up to you what you want to do, whether you want to eat, drink, whatever, and offset what you're doing, or whether you're using this as some kind of a calorie burn. Uh, who knows? But hopefully you enjoyed this one. Hopefully uh, it was an entertaining enough row. And hopefully you got a good stretch because the stretch had drawn up in the corner. So thank you so much for being part of this one. I will see you in one of my myriad workouts that I have up on this channel. Please take a look at some of them uh, and let me know what you think of them. Um, we will just have the hashtag Corona today, okay? If you got this far through and you want to leave a hashtag comment just to say you got this far in the video. Um, and I will see you in another video. Until then, stay safe, be well. Bye -bye.